Good morning and buenos dias. I am Abu Shaib, and welcome back for another lesson in Puerto Rican expressions. This morning we're going to take a look at music. We're going to take a look at some basic vocabulary, and then we're going to take a look at some terminology that's completely different in Spanish than it is in English. And it's not very logical either as far as how it would go. La musica, la musica. We have that accent above the U, la musica. Song. Song in Spanish is canción, la canción. Una canción hermosa. Una canción hermosa, a beautiful song. When we have a word that ends in C-I-O-N with the accent above the O, it's always a feminine noun in Spanish. Therefore, it always carries the definite article la in front of it. La canción hermosa, the beautiful song. A hymn, a hymn that you sing in church is el himno. The H in Spanish is always silent unless it's together with the C forming the CH sound. But when you see an H alone, it's usually not pronounced. It doesn't even lengthen the vowel or anything else. It's just there for space, really. El himno. The book that the hymns are in is el himnario, the himno. El himnario. This word also means anthem. National anthem in Spanish is el himno nacional. Cantamos el himno nacional en el partido de béisbol. We sang the national anthem at the baseball game. Cantamos el himno nacional en el partido de béisbol. Partido de béisbol, the baseball game. Partido is a game when we're talking about professional or organized sports. Partido de béisbol. Verse. A verse, when we're talking about a song, a verse is una estrofa in Spanish. Estrofa, estrofa. Vamos a cantar la primera estrofa y la tercera estrofa. We're going to sing the first verse and the third verse. Vamos a cantar la primera estrofa y la tercera estrofa. We are going to sing the first verse and the third verse. We can also use the word verso in Spanish, but this is more applied for like poetry or prose or something like that. Now when we talk about Bible verses, we have to use the long word el versículo, el versículo, with the accent above the I, el versículo. El capítulo 3, el versículo 16, chapter 3, verse 16. El libro de Juan, el libro de Juan, capítulo 3, versículo 16. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. El libro de Juan, el capítulo 3, el versículo 16. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo que ha dado a su Hijo unigénito para que todo aquel que en él cree no se pierda, mas tenga vida eterna. Amén, amén. John 3, 16. Sing. Cantar. Vamos a cantar. Yo canto. Él o ella canta. Ellos cantan. Nosotros cantamos. Cantar. To sing. A singer, a singer in Spanish, depending on if it's a man or a woman, is el o la cantante. El cantante. Now if it's a famous, respected, or super talented singer, we can use the word el cantautor. El cantautor. For example, Enrique Iglesias is un cantante, pero Julio Iglesias is un cantautor. Enrique Iglesias is a singer, but his father, Julio Iglesias, is a singer. Musical instruments. Oh, one more other word that's not on the list is el coro. El coro, this can mean the chorus, C-O-R-O. -O. El coro can mean the chorus of a song, but it can also mean choir, like El coro de la iglesia. Esa iglesia tiene tremendo coro. That church has a great choir. Tremendo. We use the word tremendo to say great a lot here in Puerto Rico. Tremendous. Tremendo coro. A great choir. Musical instruments. Instrumentos musicales. Most of these are logically translated because they all come from the same Greek root, or Latin roots, excuse me. Though a couple exceptions are the drum set. The drum set in Spanish is generally la batería, la batería. Drum is tambor, but drum set is batería, la batería, like batteries, like nine volt batteries. Uh, keyboard is a little bit different too. El teclado. Tecla is one key. El teclado is a keyboard. Teclado, teclado. Genre, genre. Genre in Spanish is el género, el género. 
as most people know here in Puerto Rico, we have artists that are very influential in many tropical generos, many tropical styles. Tropical styles include merengue, they all come under this tropical umbrella, merengue, salsa, cumbia from Colombia, other regional national sounds. They all come under this umbrella of tropical. The tropical market is really here in the Caribbean as well as Venezuela, parts of Colombia, up even to the trop, uh, Caribbean coast of Me Mexico out there in Yucatan. It's a tropical market. Salsa is perhaps the best known tropical genre. We have many, many influential artists from Puerto Rico that are active in salsa. And most recently, reggaeton, which is another tropical sound, but reggaeton is the most modern. It's really Puerto Rican rap. Reggaeton. Now when we talk about the folkloric music and the traditional, traditional music of Puerto Rico, we have to say musica tipica, typical music. Musica tipica, or musica hibarra, hibarra. This word hibarro, hibarro is, can be one person, a hibarro, or it can be an adjective describing the culture, the cultura hibarra. This is the traditional culture from Puerto Rico. It's like, you know, they're cowboy or some people try to translate it as hillbilly or bumpkin, but it's really doesn't have that kind of negative stereotypes that we we think of when we use the word hillbilly in English. It'd be more like cowboy, really, because it's a you know a proud, self self-sustaining Puerto Rican hibaro, hibaro, the original culture. So, a, an artist that's very influential or very well known that typifies musica, musica tipica of Puerto Rico is named Andres Jimenez. And he's also, his nickname is El Hibarito, the little Hibaro, El Hibarito. If you want, you can look him up. So, music theory, la teoría de música. I was surprised to find out that everything has a different name in Spanish. But the most important and significant difference is the names of the keys. In Spanish, and I imagine in other Romance languages, they use the major scale, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, to indicate the names of the keys. So what would be the key of C in English is the la clave de do. You can also say la tonalidad de do in Spanish. So if we talk about the key of F, we're talking about la clave de fa. Now if we talk about F sharp, the word for sharp, which I didn't write here, is sostenido, sustained, sostenido. Pues, if it's in F sharp, we say la clave de, de fa sostenido, fa sostenido, F sharp. If it's A flat, we would say la clave de la bemo. Bemo is the palabra for flat. Bemo, or bemol, I've seen it with an L on the end also, bemol. So, la bemol, la clave de a la bemol would be the key of A flat. Now, everything else in written music in Spanish has a different name, and it's not logical. It doesn't follow the same logic that we do in English. In English, we use mathematical names for these, these rhythmic figures, as they're called in Spanish. The musical notes are called uh, figuras musicales or figuras, figuras rítmicas in Spanish. The whole note, for example, is una, una redonda, una redonda, whole note. Half note is una blanca, quarter note is una negra, and sixteenth note is una chorchea. All these words have to be learned. The time signature is called el fraccionario, el numero fraccionario. The treble clef, I believe, is el signo de la clave. And there are many other differences, too, if we go deeper into music theory. But let, let's just scratch the surface for now, and I hope you learned some musical terminology and that you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for viewing. Have a great day.